Welcome back to the Auto Car Show, and we are celebrating our 300th episode from the 2014 Auto Expo. And well, we've already shown you the Maruti Suzuki Celerio, and now would be a good time to step into the hall, wouldn't it? Actually, no, because even before the doors of the Auto Expo opened, manufacturers had opened up their treasure chests and showed us their very best, their most prized cars. Tata Motors has gone through one of the most lean, toughest phase in the last few months and in the year that's gone by. But this is a company that's known to bounce back with one killer product. Could it be their new hatchback that sends them bolting towards the future? This is, of course, the Bolt. Straight away, when you look at the Bolt from the side especially, you'll see that the glass house, there's no getting away. This is based on the Vista. But everything has been changed about it. When you look at every panel, whether it's the hood, whether the door panels, whether it's the rear, we see the new tail lamps, which are now nestled lower down, not the long tail lamps that we've associated with Tata's. This is a clear message that Tata's changing and heading into a new direction, into a new future. And well, the car definitely looks very stylish, very smart, sporty, young, and on the inside as well, you'll see there's a lot of change. But first, I'm gonna talk about what's under the skin. New uh, tailoring for the suspension, which is aimed towards better driving dynamics, more comfort, a more silent ride. And that aside, Tata's also shifted to an electric power steering. And of course, you are getting the Revitron, the new 1.2 liter turbocharged petrol motor from Tata Motors, which is said to be very fuel efficient. And that's all under the hood. Now let's see what it's like on the inside. Other cool bits include those projector headlamps, which will make it to production. And although those Momo wheels look really cool, they won't make it to production. Now, on the inside, this is very impressive. I mean, the new design just looks very classy. Nice details like the chrome rings for the air vents, the shape it has, and even this attempt to not just look cooler, but feel cooler too in terms of perceived quality. So you look at the finish, the colors used, leather seats, and Tara Motors tell us, Pratap Bose was talking to us that this is what you will get in the final car, leather seats, there's even leather door trim. Uh, so it all looks and feels impressive, like this chunky new steering wheel. You get a very well-designed center console as well with text-to-speech, uh, it has Bluetooth. You can even stream maps from your phone onto the display in the car. So very cool stuff and uh, definitely feels more upmarket and appealing. Now the second car from Tata Motors here is the Zest. The Zest is a three box version of the Bolt and as such shares the same design. Small differences include the addition of LED daytime running lights at the front. Overall the Zest looks smart and sure. While the rear isn't perfect, it doesn't look too gawky or weird. And when it comes to boot space, Let's just say there's enough to take on the competition. But that aside, the talking point for this car is going to be what's under the hood. In this case, yes, there's a petrol Revotron motor here as well. But what's the real big talking point will be the gearbox. There's an automated manual transmission like we spoke about on the Celerio. But in this case, on the Zest, it's going to be coming with the 1.3 litre jet diesel engine. So that's going to make the Zest a really interesting and unique proposition for the Indian market. Tata will only introduce the automatic manual transmission or the F-Tronic as it's called with the petrol motor about a year after launch. Uh, that aside, yes, Tata have had the Indigo ECS in the Indian market, which will continue selling. But this is going to target the likes of Maruti's Desire and, of course, Honda's new Amaze. While it may not have the long wheelbase of the Manza, you won't be complaining about space on the inside. So no surprises, this back seat is very impressive, spacious, comfortable seats. Headroom though has been hampered a bit by the roof line. You can feel it cutting in here. Uh, but that aside, a great back seat and in fact a great cabin to be in because it's not just the space. Sara Motors has worked hard, like on the bowl, to improve the quality here. Sharper, smarter design, shares the dashboard, looks good, well equipped, impressive on the inside. And both these starters are slated for launch in the second half of 2014. After that, we headed to meet up with another sub 4 meter car.
Now, the second sub 4 meter car for the day for us is from Ford. This is the Figo concept. And I think that in itself is interesting because Figo straight away tells you that it should be a simple, honest, practical and spacious car. So while this is just a concept for now, we're sure it's coming into production next year. This sub 4 meter saloon, very striking to look at. The nose has that Aston Martin-like grille that we've seen on other Fords, very striking headlamps. And what we've seen with the EcoSport, you can expect here as well, which means this dramatic look makes it into production as well. Now on the design front, you can see that they've worked to get as much room as possible on the inside. So it is quite tall and you can even see that the roof line of the rear is quite squared off to give you more headroom. So this should be a spacious sub 4 meter saloon. You can't shoot the interiors, but there's a mock-up inside and you can see that the dashboard resembles what we've seen on the EcoSport. And uh, we can't shoot the boot as well, but we do expect it to be quite usable and spacious on that front. Now this car is clearly aimed at India, first and foremost because it's tailored to the sub 4 meter rules and it's of course made its debut here right before the Auto Expo. Uh, we will see it in India in 2015 and when it comes to India you can expect it to drive like a Ford, that's something they insist on so it should be a great car to drive and powering it you can expect it to have a range of petrol engines, the 1.2 litre, the 1 litre EcoBoost and maybe even the 1.5 litre Sigma engine and of course the 1.5 litre diesel. So Ford will be looking at taking on the likes of Maruti's Desire, Tata's upcoming Zest, Honda's Amaze and of course Hyundai's Grand Iten Saloon. Yes, the next day the sub 4 meter Hyundai was right on top of my menu. What we've got here is the notchback version of Hyundai's runaway success, the Grand i10 which was launched last year. Its name is the Accent, which is a play on the word Accent, which was one of Hyundai's biggest hits when they first came to India. Mechanically, the Accent is based on Hyundai's Grand i10, and it shares the same wheelbase, although it is longer to accommodate the boot. When it comes to the engines, Hyundai will offer petrol and diesel motors, with the option of manual and automatic gearboxes. As likely as not, these will be the same that we've seen on the Grand i10. Now in terms of features, the Accent gets alloy wheels, 15 inch alloy wheels over the 14 inches offered on the Grand i10 and it also gets a rear view camera. Now no surprises, the experience on the inside was impressive. Now obviously the Accent shares a lot with the Grand Item in terms of features, it has everything that the Grand Item has, which means it has a lot and it tops all of that by also getting climate control air conditioning. It gets electrochromatic rear view mirror, which also has an integrated display for the rear view camera. Now here in the back seat, the Grand Item was impressive and so is the accent. You have lots of legroom, pretty good uh, rear bench and pretty nice headroom as well. All in all, really a comfortable back seat, which is made all the more better, of course, with the dedicated air vents for the rear passengers. So as with every other Hyundai, the Accent is going to be equipped right up to its eyeballs with goodies. So when it is launched towards the end of March, you can be sure it will be priced to take the competition head on. Datsun made a big splash at the Expo. Their first car for India was prominently on display, the Go Hatch. This car will be launched in March with a sub 4 lakh rupee price tag. What we've got here is Datsun's second car for India, the Go Plus. This is basically the Go hatchback which has been stretched a bit to make it into an MPV. Despite that, the Go Plus is under 4 meters long and it is expected to come with the 1.2 litre 3 cylinder petrol engine from the Go hatchback, which means it qualifies as a small car. Its wheelbase is the same as the hatch too, which means the space on the inside is similar, as is the quality and design of the interiors. But what matters a lot in an MPV is its third row. Now getting into the third row is a bit tricky. For that you have to flip the middle row down and to get in, you kind of crawl in and get to the third row and when you do get to the third row you'll realize that this is how you'll be sitting 
I mean, you probably want to do this, but hang on. Let's get the middle row up and really get a feel of this. Ah. Okay, this is definitely tight. You can see the headroom for me and I'm only five feet six is non-existent. My knees are straight up. The seat is really just down on the floor. So this is truly, purely for kids, small kids. Also, the boot space isn't particularly striking. Now sure, the Datsun Go Plus might not make a lot of sense in terms of space, but Datsun are saying that the pricing is going to be incredibly aggressive. How aggressive? We were expecting 6 lakhs, but this might be well under 5 lakh rupees. In fact, in Indonesia, the price of the Datsun Go Plus is only marginally higher than the Datsun Go. Now what I have here is a concept from Datsun, it's called the Redigo and it previews their third car that's slated to come to India. The Redigo is going to be an auto competitor from Datsun. You can expect it to be launched in India early 2015. What makes it really special is that we've been told that its design is going to make it to production pretty much as is. We can't take a look inside the car, so we can't tell you how much space and what kind of interiors it has, but this suddenly looks like a very promising car from Datsun.